It's time to take your business to the next level, the boss level. These are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Now let's welcome your host, Ann Ganguza. Hey everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Ann Ganguza, with a very special guest co-host with me today, Mr. Paul Stefano. Paul Stefano. Hi, Ann. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me. Oh my gosh, I'm doing great. So for those of you that don't know Paul, Paul is a voice talent extraordinaire and co-host of the VO Meter podcast, along with Sean Daly. And Paul, 20 years experience means that I read that your ch- early childhood recordings were on a tape recorder. So we have something in common there. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I, it goes back quite that far where we were in the, the caveman times, right? Was it, was it a realistic? or a Panasonic tape recorder? That's what I want to know. It was Panasonic, the one with the five buttons, like the the, the four black buttons and the red one slash white one that you had to press a little tiny button to to record on. (laughs) So my first voiceover, quote unquote, and I didn't even know it at the time, my first voiceover experience was in college where I would record books on cassette tape. uh, And they actually, it was physics books and math books. And I would have to record. And gosh, whenever I made a mistake, of course, I had to hit the stop and then I had to rewind and then I had to re-record over it. It was uh, it was tedious, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, I think I had friends who did that because I was a radio and television major. So there was always people looking for side gigs. People were in bands and working for radio stations. So I think I knew someone who did that, too. Yeah. So see, so early on, Paul, you and I, I think we're, we're tech heads, but I think uh, you might up me on gear in terms of being uh, a, a geek on... <laughs> voiceover recording gear. So for those of you that have not listened to the VO Meter podcast and or just talked with uh, Paul, <laughs> you really should because Paul, you I think you I think you probably do more mic shootouts than anybody I know. Yeah, Sean does quite a few too, but we have a we have a segment called Questionable Gear Purchase, which started out just being all the dumb stuff we bought that we didn't need and then we'd talk about it and test it out. It's actually worked out quite well, though, because when I'm helping somebody, like frequently talent will ask me for questions about stuff they bought or, or looking to buy. And almost assuredly, Sean or me have used it. So we can offer a, a pretty good perspective on that. Well, that's awesome. That's great. Well, speaking of technology... I think, as you know, there has been quite a bit of talk lately about um, high tech coming into our world, into the voiceover industry. And specifically by that, I mean AI and synthesized voices. And I know that everybody seems to have an opinion on it that isn't necessarily favor- favorable. However, um, myself being a tech person and, and I think you as well, we have a different we have a different outlook on it. And I know that you, for a fact, have uh, kind of delved into that area in voiceover. And I was hoping we'd talk about that today. Yeah, I've been thinking about this for a long time. In fact, I've asked almost all of our guests on, on our own podcast about it. As usually a last question about what do you think? When do you think or how do you think AI will change the industry? And I'm taking a very much if you can't beat them, join them approach. And not because I, I think we we can't coexist, but I want to coexist. I think it's something that can benefit voice actors in the long run. Uh, The way I I see it and the companies I've started doing some work with are very much approaching it this way is as a supplement to a voice actor doing Mm -hmm. regular jobs. And that's the way I think it should be. And if most people get out in front of it like you and I are and work with these companies that are the good players in the industry and license voices, only use them ethically and... Uh, will bid on jobs or let you as a voice talent who's creating the voice bid on jobs, I think it could work out for everybody in the future. Yeah, I think that's a a really smart way to look at it. And let's kind of like take that apart because I want the boss listeners out there to really look at it with a new set of eyes, shall we say, or ears, right? So Mm -hmm. one of the reasons, what was one of the reasons that you said, well, if you can't beat them, join them. And then you must have done some other research. And I know that you're working with some companies that I think that are really what I consider to be fair players in the industry. I mean, as fair as they can be at this point, right? Because it's in its infancy. So tell me what sort of things that you were looking for in terms of if you were going to work with these companies, what what were things that you were looking for? For your voice. Well, first of all, I wanted to approach it like we do when we're bidding on jobs as 
as talent now or when our agents are sending us quotes. You want to have your voice licensed for a particular length of time, whether it be uh, a year or three months, six months. You want it licensed for a particular product, and that could be commercial or a training video or a YouTube video, but you want a specific product or usage that is being used for and a specific length of time that's being used for. And then ideally, those would be renewable. So that's where you get your residual income. And whether that comes from an agent or you're doing it yourself, you should always have that in mind. So almost never would you want to agree to a job in perpetuity unless you were being paid ridiculous sums of money, talking like seven, eight figures, because mm -hmm. that would preclude you from doing a job for a competitor or in that industry for the rest of your life. And nobody wants that. So I think one of the biggest fears people have is that companies will take your voice and use it in that way, in perpetuity, without your knowledge. And I think there are some, some nefarious people out there that are grabbing voices from auditions and, and online casting sites and doing that, that very thing. And that's what I worry about. But I started to work with a company called Vocal ID, who some of your listeners may know started out as a way to create voices for people who had lost their voice, either to illness or paralysis or some other way, or maybe were born without the ability to speak. So they had created synthetic voices based on recordings of, of regular voice actors, and maybe some of your listeners or my listeners have even done this before, and they created voices for people who had no voice. And mm -hmm. because of that altruistic start that they had, uh, they're actually approaching AI in a similar way. So. Uh, the founder and CEO is a, a woman by the name of Rupal Patel, who I've started working with, and they are creating synthetic voices of voice actors in a very ethical way and taking into account all the things I just mentioned about how we license our voices now, usage, uh, placement, all the things that, we, that we're concerned about are still under the control of the person who's creating the voice, but are... are uh, are allowing you to create a synthetic version of yourself to be used however you see fit. And we can talk about why that might be a good idea as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested to to understand how is it that we can track our voice? But before I even ask you that, how do we even track our voice today? Because a lot of times people are like, well, I'm afraid somebody's going to steal my voice and then it'll be used everywhere. Well, right now, what is, you know, how do we find out if our voice is used anywhere else than what we originally agreed to. I mean, it's kind of a, you know, needle in a haystack, right? You don't necessarily know. And the same is true with AI. However, I think there are new technologies coming out that are going to be able to help track where that voice is. Just as AI can track, it can do facial recognition, there's also audio recognition. Yeah, I'm actually not too privy to any of the AI tracking tools, but uh, some of the ways we do it now are with um, sites like iSpot TV. So for commercial commercial voices, you can go there. And quite honestly, a lot of the time, it's it's friends and colleagues in the industry that will alert you. Someone will, will email me or contact mm -hmm. me and say, did you know your voice is being used on this? It happened to me about a year ago, actually. I'd, I'd done a video game, a virtual reality video game that was supposed to only be played at a, a kiosk at the top of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. So it was a, a virtual reality game that this company had created to showcase their technology in Dubai. And uh, a friend of my show, and probably you've talked to as well, Stephen George, contacted me and said, mm -hmm. do you know your voice is on The Amazing Race right now? Which is a TV show on CBS. Wow. <laughs> so I went back and watched the episode. And what had happened was they had gone as one of the challenges for The Amazing Race was to do this video game. So my voice is all over this episode of The Amazing Race. Now, unfortunately, because of the the agreement I signed, I didn't get any additional income from it. But that's usually how I find out about things like this is colleagues alerting me and saying, hey, I heard you on the radio. Did you know that? Wow. Well, you know, my husband works for an AI company, and I've i said this on more than one occasion in the podcast, but just in case you guys need that reminder, and my husband actually, um, his company pr creates software that does uh, tracking. It's one of their softwares. It does tracking for facial recognition as well as audio recognition. So theoretically, if you create an ad and it is out there, you know, somewhere in the on the internet, in the digital ethernet, uh, it can track where that voice is. And so 
I say that there is definitely kind of a cool thing coming if it's not here right now. I mean, it's being worked on. And so I think that there's going to be traceability and trackability for your voice, which will really help to, you know, make sure that our voices are only used in in where we intend them to be used and not any more and not any less. And we should get, you know, however we negotiate a contract, um, our voice should be licensed for whatever it is that we agree and we should get compensated if it uh, extends beyond that as well. So what sort of things have you been looking for in the company that you're working with now with uh, Vocal ID? Um, I assume that there is, you know, you've, you've signed a legal contract and so you feel that you've been sufficiently covered in case your voice gets used anywhere that it, that it should be or should not be. Yeah, and it goes back to what I was saying before is that I think the best way forward is to partner with these companies that are quote unquote good players in the industry. And there are others cropping up that kind that want to do the right thing and have in their agreements how that should work. So with in Vocal ID's case, there is no use of my voice without me approving it first. So mm-hmm. but they will also, on my behalf, pitch the voice to companies they want to work with. And that this is something I kind of want to delve into about how this can benefit a voice actor in the future. So right now, I should say that we're in the process of creating the voice, and I'm doing the recording right now. And it, it involves several hours of recording. Anyone who's ever done any sort of TTS before knowingly knows how that works. But you record several hours of, of audio. Well, it's hard not to know, Paul, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> If you are recording for TTS, like if you don't know that you're not, you know what I mean? If you're if you're recording hundreds, thousands of prompts and you don't realize that it's probably for TTS, you need to really go back and, yeah. Brings up a good point, though. I was recently mentoring uh, a young lady. Well, she's basically my age, but I'm going to consider us both young. There you go. Gosh darn it. There you go. We were talking about, she was asking me how you know if something is is TTS because she had gotten this this contract that seemed kind of fishy. And I said, well, if they're asking you to record several short phrases Mm -hmm. and in different intonations and tones and maybe even individual letters, it's probably to build a a, a synthetic voice. So just watch out for that. But going back to the the process with vocal ID, once I'm done and it takes a couple of hours, about probably about three to four hours to get it, all the, all the recordings done and they create the voice, they're going to send virtual Paul out on auditions and I may not even know about it. Now, again, because of the, the agreement we have, they won't actually submit him for any jobs. I keep, I'm referring to him, Virtual, virtual Paul, virtual as I'm Paul, calling yeah. him. I don't know if there's actually a name for the product when it's done, but I'm calling him Virtual Paul for now. So Virtual Paul can go out on auditions. At the same time, me, Real Paul, is going out on auditions. We may never interact, but it could generate two streams of income. So I could be sitting sitting uh, in the backyard with a martini while virtual Paul is securing a job with an e-learning company. And so I guess a question would be from maybe those who might be still fearful of that. Uh, is virtual Paul going to be making a lot of money compared to real Paul or will virtual Paul eventually overtake real Paul? What are your thoughts? I think that's to be determined. I think it depends on the... The adoption rate. So I think there will be some pushback from companies initially. So in the case where there's both of us out there in the marketplace, virtual Paul and regular Paul, I think they may say, you know what, I want to have the live actor. But in cases where it's it's not as important whether they have the live actor or not. So there's a lot of jobs where directed sessions make sense, right? Commercials, almost always video games. There's a lot of uh, jobs where we do self-directed and it's not that necessary to have the live actor there. So E-learning companies, I think, are going to be the biggest adopters early on, and See, they, can, wanna, they can work with somebody. I want to push back on that because I'm a teacher. Yeah, go ahead. Because I'm a teacher. Um, I'm going to say the people that don't realize that it's important to have a teacher behind the mic, which could be e-learning companies that don't have a big budget, right? And they And they... Because... I, see, I'm just still trying to defend the e-learning companies. I'm not saying they're not going to try it. I think there's going to be a, quite a few people that will try it because it's a lot of it's a lot of work, right? It's a lot of words, and typically an AI or you know synthesized voice will be a a, a much cheaper option for them. I think, however, when it comes to engagement for students, at some point we can only hope that you know if you need 
that teacher behind the mic to be more engaging, to be more human, that they'll hire the human, uh, the human component as opposed to the AI. I think personally, um, IVR is going to be probably the first genre to um, be taken over, <laughs> so to speak. Um, and mm-hmm. I do think e-learning as well. I just, I want to I want to be both though. I want to be able to be the human teacher behind the mic that, that engages my learners instead of sounding like a robot. Because half the time, if you've taken an e-learning course and it's been a, a, a bad one, it's usually because the voice sounds robotic. And so there will be those people that, that it matters something to them. And then there'll be a whole nother, I think, part of the market where it doesn't matter so i agree with you i just want to i just want to hopefully keep the human part of the teacher behind it because you know i was a teacher i was an educator for 20 years and i think it makes a difference but i understand the market and really we have to go with the market and i think paul it's 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 one of the reasons why would you ever you know sell your voice or be you know synthesize your voice well you know we have to evolve i mean if we're entrepreneurs like we say that we are i mean we truly have to evolve with the market and the market is evolving and we can you know curmudgeon all we want and say get off my lawn um but <laughs> in reality um it's coming right ai is coming to synthesize voices are here they're getting better every day and they're coming whether we stop there's no way we're stopping them whether we complain about it or not so i think you know evolving and pivoting and working with it is is a good i think it's a good um forward thinking business move yeah i think the market will bear out where it eventually leads and it could be there is a two-tiered structure so Mm -hmm. the virtual version of ann may be able to charge x amount and it might be a third of what real Anne can charge for the same job. And you have to decide as a voice actor, assuming you're working with these companies that are ethical and upfront about it, you have to decide whether you want the higher rate to do it live or it's okay to take a third less right. and let virtual Anne do the job while you go read an audiobook or whatever else you need to work on during that time. And, and maybe virtual Anne gets like... I don't know, 30 times the jobs, right? And so when you actually calculate, you know, your parallel income streams, maybe virtual land does pretty darn good. You yeah, know? that would be the hope, right? So that would benefit yeah, exactly. both the companies that are hiring, you as a, as a voice talent, as well as the company that's licensed your voice. And everybody wins. That's right. And when I'm like 90 and maybe my voice isn't the same, right? I could still be making money off of my, my voice. Well, right? I have and considered d- that. And then right? there's, there's always the unknown. I mean, we, we've all had friends and, and family who have been silenced for some reason, either due to an illness like ALS mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. a stroke. Absolutely. And you never know if your voice is going to be the same after something like that. But if you've captured it in a, in a, a process like Vocal ID is using, then you've got it forever. So now, now, Paul, I know that you, you're, you're working with Vocal ID. I've been in talks with Vocal ID myself. Um, I have right now some companies that I've just listed. I haven't researched all of them, but these are just. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw out a list of the companies that I've seen advertised, which will do synthetic voices or uh, text to speech. Um, Talkia, Speechalo, uh, Syn- I think it's Synthesia or Synthesia, Well Said, Replica. Resemble.ai, um, what is it, Synantic, that's with the uh, with the Faith um, first AI bot who can cry, the Vocal ID, um, and Voiceify. So those are... What about Descript? Have you talked oh, about yeah, them? Oh, yeah, Descript. There's another one. I did. That was That's a good one. That's about the only ones that I've come up with so far, but I have not done any um, real in-depth, but these are just like in the last few days, what has come up. And especially if you're going to be researching them, they'll show up on your Facebook feed, which that's another podcast, but... Uh, <laughs> And and by the way, um, you know, our voices have been captured for years, for years. Um, and I don't know if anybody really talks about that. Um, but our voices probably, you know, if you have a smartphone, uh, <laughs> if you have an Alexa device, I mean, our, our voices have been captured and uh, we don't necessarily even know it. So it's it's an interesting topic when you can actually take back control of that. Right. And if you can work with a company that's ethical 
And I think, you know, I, I think that for every company that wants to come out and build something that's ethical and good, you might have uh, a lot of these kind of, I'm going to say, fly by night startups that will just try to make a quick buck. And I think you can tell a lot by the way they market themselves, which, you know, I think there's a, there's a particular company that's marketing uh, saying uh, something, but for games, specific for video games, right? So you don't need to have the expense of a voice actor or get your voiceover quick and, you know, and fast. And you don't have to worry, why pay for voiceovers again? That kind of thing, which really makes all of us probably, you know, cringe as we see it. But <laughs> what, uh, are there any other companies that you have taken a look at that you feel are on um, the more strong straight path and the, and the more ethical path? The only other one I'm aware of that you've actually mentioned is Replica. They've reached out to me and we're in early talks. So I can come back maybe on a future episode and let you know how that goes. But I don't, I'm not familiar with the other ones and I haven't researched it that, that much. But to follow up on your point about uh, the, the fly-by-night operators, I think that's why it's more important than ever, especially in you and I are speaking from America right now, with, which is a... a mm-hmm market based on capitalism, this is how you can really make your voice heard is is with your wallet. Work with these companies that will do it the right way, get them to be the dominant players in the capital market, and that way you won't have to worry about these fly-by-night operators, and everyone will be working with the companies you want to work with. Exactly. That's a really good point. Really good point. So what sort of things, like when do you expect, is Virtual Paul out yet, or is Virtual Paul going to be out at some point soon, and when do you think he might be available for purchase? So I've done about an hour of recording, and I think I mentioned it takes like three to four. I may be off of that number. Ripple will slap me on the wrist if I've got the number wrong. But um, there's several hours to record still. And then once that's done, it takes a couple of weeks. So fairly soon, we'll, we'll have something to showcase. And I plan to market the heck out of him once he's ready. Cool. Well, awesome. Well, what a what a, a great time talking with you, Paul. You've offered some really interesting thoughts and wisdom for for bosses out there that might be thinking about it. Now, you know, you guys, I, I think, again, we have to evolve with the times and you may not be ready to run out right now, but I think that a good, you know, a, a good amount of time should be spent researching companies and thinking about what you might want to do with your voice in the next few years. I would expect in the next three to five years, there's going to be market improvements with these voices, not necessarily saying that they'll be completely directable, which is why I think we'll always need the human voice. But we do have to we do have to anticipate a shift, um, a shift in the industry. It's kind of like, you know, when MP3s came out, digital music came out. Right. And all of a sudden, like what happened to that market when everything went digital? So we have to really try to think that this could possibly happen with voiceover as well right it's going digital so be aware of what's out there and educate yourself i think there'll be a whole new cottage industry too of people who know how to manipulate and direct these synthesized voices i've seen some of the back-end technology that vocal id is using and you can do amazing things right now in adjusting pitch adding pauses and inflections Mm -hmm. and all it takes is someone operating the software so i think there'll be a whole cottage industry maybe even for people who are experienced voice actors to supplement their income by being, I don't know what the, the, the job title would be, but synthesized voice jockeys, some, something Directors. like that. <laughs> voice jockeys, I love it. I love it. All right. Well, Paul, thank you so much for spending time with us today and sharing your wisdom. And uh, I can't wait to hear virtual Paul. And someday out there, there'll be a virtual Anne. And uh, yeah, there we go. We could do a podcast together. <laughs> It's been a pleasure, as always, <laughs> Yes, and uh, look forward to speaking again. Thank you. A big shout out to our sponsor, IPDTL. You, too, can connect and network like a boss and sound like a boss. Find out more at IPDTL.com. Have a great week, guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at voboss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies, and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL.